Hey, it's Sebastian for the Metal yeah. God Meltdown, and today I have the pleasure to be joined by Yossi from Moonshot. How are you doing? Excellent. And this is Bill. Hope you're doing fine. The second album, The Power, gets released near the end of April. How impatient are you waiting for its release onto the world? It's it's really exciting. I exciting times. It's like you know, it's you know, it's sometimes it's like. You are staying in a, you know, you know, child, and you are staying in a candy store, and you're just looking up there. And, okay, there's something really good coming up, but you can't hold it yet. <laughs> but you're getting it soon, and it's like, you know, and it's like, of course, it was really, really intense and long, you know, said, you know, this time, you know, how we, you know, wrote the album. How gratifying then is it to see Shadowboxer riding so high in the rock charts, specifically Germany? something like this to happen you know shadow boxer and also the first single yes both of those songs have been you know taken in really well in, in the german radio so that was something that we wouldn't we weren't actually expecting to have such a great welcome so so uh yeah it feels great i uh, especially adore the video it's a pure adrenaline rush and you really do involve your fans that's so important these days isn't it yeah, yeah, and it's like I, I think that when it, when it comes to moonshot, it's like a, you know, if we're something where we are a live band, and and, and the magic happens when we are playing live, and it's like, and another thing which like really really important for us, it's 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 audience and dialogue between the band and the audience, and it's like when we're playing live, it's like we're sending some kind of energy, and we are you know expecting something back and when we're getting it back we can put it like double it and and we got put it then then back and it's like that's that the happy things it's that happy thing is something that we really really enjoy and it's it's all about this band you know in a way as we've already said as well it's now a while to the album hits the streets i mean it's within touching distance so would are there plans to release any more singles before release date yeah, we we do have the plan. And, uh, there's actually, you know, one more single coming in March, and uh, then at the release date of the album, we're gonna have this like this like what's what is called, you know, single with the album. So it's gonna be like this. Focus one more, yeah, yeah one, one more focus, focus single, yeah, focus single at at the actual release date. So five singles all together. Together. Awesome. So on release date, do you plan to live stream, restream the show and release party? I mean, are you even having a release party actually? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have some. We are planning to have such a thing. Yeah, we're gonna stream it. That's actually a great idea. Yeah. Well, we'll need to. We need to get some more planning done yeah. with that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Thanks for the tip. Right, <laughs> but you know, when, when it comes, if you know. If we're having these parties in Finland, the, the problem is that nobody is saying anything and then they drink like, let's say, 20 pints in a row and then and they're silent again. You know, so <laughs> uh, it's it's we can talk and we can like communicate in a way. It's like it's it's quite short. The stream you know, would be so. like, you know, our, our music <laughs> playing in the background and like this silent noise of the beer tap getting opened <laughs> and getting closed and getting opened and getting closed and then we're done. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so then, can you give us some idea about plans for tours and festivals for the year? I mean, have you got anything massive lined up festival-wise? Well, yeah, one of the big ones must be Summer Breeze in, in Germany. So we are going to play that. And uh, quite a few other ones as well uh, in, in Germany and, and something in Finland as well. Something coming in Czech Republic and... Uh, and uh, a quite extensive tour in it's gonna be mainly in germany uh -huh. this is not like it's, it's it's locked but it's not released yet so we're gonna gonna give out some news soon regarding sure. that but uh yeah that's that's pretty much it sweden and finland have got a massive metal and rock pedigree as well as germany obviously um england sort of falls a little bit short with it um even though it's the birthplace of heavy metal are there plans to get over to england i mean 
is there a chance you could get to download or bloodstock or something like that at the moment we we don't have any shows booked you know for for uk yet but we are really hoping to get something something you know you know agreed and and and, and done so yeah i've i've toured quite a few times in the uk back mm -hmm. in the day so i would love to come back feel the vibe of the uk motorway so uh so it uh, would be great yeah hopefully <laughs> hopefully okay. but you know uk is kind of it's, it's a tough market for bands so that's like usually usually you know when a metal band comes from finland it goes it goes to germany you know <laughs> and, <laughs> and you know from germany they might come to uk if yeah. the people in the uk are interested and so on so i i don't well i suppose we're not an exception in that sense so yeah, I think the thing with the UK is like, well, it's probably everywhere now. A lot of venues are closing down and that, and it's difficult. And a lot of European, uh, mainland European bands come and play London. But obviously, the UK is bigger than London. But yeah, it can't be easy, especially these days. But on to more fun questions now. So then, who has the most annoying habit when you are on the road? <laughs> I think we all share this burden of bad habits. <laughs> yeah. And I think one of the one of, one of the, you know, good thing, you know, when you have been touring a lot mm. is that you are kind of developed yourself in this kind of ached sense mm -hmm. that when somebody is having a bad habit, how to turn your head away from that mm -hmm. no. yeah. <laughs> and it's like how to forget this kind of thing and you know the same go you know goes for your own bad habits as well you know <laughs> yeah yeah i you know i think you know we we have been throwing so much you know throughout our whole adult years and yeah. like teenage years so we kind of you know the, the the you know the all the bad habits you know, they have been like, like, you know, worn out to death <laughs> early, early in, in our life. So, so nowadays, of course, we still have it, but we are all kind of, you know, gentlemen getting close to middle age. So, so it's like we, we, <laughs> we just take it easy and mellow. And if something yeah. happens, yeah. we just laugh about it. So it's, you know, the, the, the yeah. drama is behind us in a way. <laughs> So with your other bands over the years, then obviously you've toured, you've been around the world. What would you say has been the weirdest venue you've ever played? Well, personally, the weirdest venue would be most likely this really, really absurd place in Latvia, in the town right. called Liepaja. There is this, like, it's like a big, it looks like this, giant 1700 barn which but like this guy from denmark moved there and bought the place and built this really weird club inside of it and right and, and you know i think all, all the bands that have been there they all have all these crazy stories of like that night and you know whatever happened and all the all the weird stuff that the guy who owns the place just he you can expect anything from this guy so 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 that that was a crazy night i i must i must say and that was also my birthday while we were there so it kind of like, like added twist to it so so <laughs> so i leave the rest to imagination so all right okay <laughs> I have had actually those same kind of feelings in this Liepaja place as well. It's one of the. It's hard to beat that that place in many right. sense. You know, it's <laughs> like, like it's really. What, was it called? Was it called Johnny's Palace? Fontaine's Fontaine's Palace. Fontaine's Palace. Yeah, that's, right, okay. that's the one. Yeah. Fontaine's. Yeah. Are we Google yeah. searching that when I cut off here? Then. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you should be aware. Definitely. <laughs> okay. All right, and so then, can you then tell me then what's been like the most disastrous show you've ever played? I I have to admit that I think, and I'm afraid that I don't remember those because why is that? <laughs> because they were so disastrous. 
Yeah, so, it's hard to say. You know, you can the show can go wrong in so many ways, but. I think one of the shows we played in Disco Ensemble's first tour, it was in Poland. And that was, you know, that was a, such a crazy fucked up place as well. So, but, uh, you know, when, the, when we arrived, there was like no PA. This was only this one. Well, there was this one PA, but there was like four guys around it and it was opened up. All these cords came out from that PA and they were just trying to fix it. And of course, they couldn't fix it. And we ended up using, using the, the other guitar amp at the PA. And uh, the the other band that we were we were with us on that tour, they actually had to play, you know, the other guitar and vocals through th for the whole show from that one Marshall cab. So, so uh, th that's talking about like 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 high class sound and great PA. That's like some sort of a record. But the show was great. So so uh, so. Not complaining. That's brilliant. So going then go back to Moonshot. As I said, I love how passionate you are about your fans. Um, do any of the stories or messages you get from your fans affect your lyrics and influence? You, yeah, it, yeah. In, in in a way, it's like I would say that we are breathing same air, and it's like. Because we're having this this habit that straight after the each moonshot show, we're making it straight away. I mean, literally straight away from the stage to the merch desk. And yeah. it's like, and what happens like straight after the show, it's like you don't have any like barrier because mm -hmm. you have gave everything, you know, you have put everything out. And something, some kind of discussions we have had there it's like you are so like open book and it's like the fans who made it to the merchant at desk they say something and you are like soaking things from them and you're yeah. giving something back and afterward you can't realize that okay this story is from this kind of you know girl or guy i have I've talked you know straight after the show and maybe this is something to do with them and it's like but yeah yeah but of yeah. course it's like when it comes to lyrics and, and themes, it has to be something from your... I kind of personally feel that it has to come straight from you and from your in the position of somebody else, I think, when it comes to, you know, writing lyrics. For for me, at least, it, it works that way. So that's why it's like... But yeah, of, of course, it's, it's about dialogue and, you know, having conversation and giving and taking back you know mm -hmm. yeah i mean how are you guys on social media i mean do you get a lot of messages over facebook and twitter or do you have someone to go through those for you or do you actually reply yourselves we're yeah, doing we, everything yeah, yeah everything ourselves yeah we, we receive them and we see them and uh and we reply to them ourselves as well so all oh. the social media in that sense is it, like it comes goes through us brilliant yeah all right, another fun one then. If if there was a made up metal song about yourself, what would it be called? Like a made up song. I would say <laughs> <laughs> this is a good one. I, I would say that you know it's like it, it's it's song called "Stay True." Okay. Keep on tapping. Stay true yeah. and keep on tapping part, but you got you got decide. <laughs> yeah. What superpower would you choose for yourself for one day? That's tough. Mm. Um, like boiling blood. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I, <laughs> it's I like that. You know. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have anything to do. <laughs> it's all well, nonsense. you know, I, I just felt that I, I might, I might, you know, this gets too difficult too early, but I must say that having a superpower would most likely be like a, like a burden. So I will, because of that, I would just pick something like I would like to be able to fly for a day, just because it would be a lot of fun, you know. I wouldn't want to be able to 
you know, read people's minds or or anything like that, or go go back on time or whatever. It's it, no. I would just fuck things up. So <laughs> imagine reading people's minds for a day. That would just fuck you up anyway, wouldn't it? Do you know yeah. I mean? yeah, <laughs> no. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nothing like nothing worse. All right. So I'm sorry about my chat. <laughs> Can you uh, <laughs> give us hey. four words to describe moonshots? Okay. Uh, I'd say uh, catchy, sincere. Willa, do you want to uh, take the other yeah, two? Yeah, I would say honest and in a way, I know this This is too much words, but in a way, sporty. That's kind of ways for your fans, our viewers and listeners. Stay there, you know, we stay here, you stay there and together it's it go it's going like one plus one is three excellent and hopefully we can we can come back to you know play play uk and then we will meet definitely and, uh, in the meantime we, we really would appreciate if you check out the new album called the power so awesome. it's out april april 26.